Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm Bob Delaney, Executive Director of the Institute for Labor Studies and Research. Labor Vision, a production of the Institute, focuses on topics of importance to working Rhode Islanders. We hope you enjoy this edition. Welcome to Labor Vision. You're watching the At Home Edition. I'm your host, Erica Hammond, and joining me today to talk about a, another initiative that United Way has going on is uh, both Jessica Lachey and Maria Murquin. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies. Thank you for having us. Yeah. For having us. All right, so today we're going to start talking about the Young Leaders Circle, which is at United Way of Rhode Island. This is our fourth episode in a hopefully a much longer series of episodes that we're gonna do partnering with United Way of Rhode Island. Um, and I'm really excited to talk about it. We've never had someone on Labor Vision to talk about this program. In just our preliminary conversations, it's made me really excited about the network. Um, so let's just jump right into it and start by, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the Young Leader Circle is? Sure. Thank you, Erica, for having us today. Um, so I am Jess Lachey, the Strategic Events Manager for the United Way of Rhode Island and the manager for the Young Leader Circle, or we'll refer to it today as YLC. Um, our mission is to inspire a generation of diverse community leaders through engagement, advocacy, professional development, and fostering a philanthropic spirit to bring community-wide equity. We're a group of about 1,800 uh, young professionals throughout the state that want to uh, come from all different walks of life that want to just network and be philanthropic and really give back to the community. Right. And how long has the Young Leader Circle been around? It's been around for 13 years. Wow. Okay. And you mentioned there's about 1,800 members now? We do. We have 1,800 members. And I believe you said... Previously, when we spoke, you said, did you start with 200 before and it's already expanded to 1,800? 13 years ago, yes, we had about 200 members. So we have really expanded. Um, we're well known throughout the state. We're the largest philanthropic, you know, networking community of like-minded individuals throughout the state. That's awesome. And as the largest networking group in the state for young professionals, what would you say sets YLC apart from other professional organizations in the state? I think that what sets YLC apart is really the support that you get um, th throughout the community that we have. You know, the members really care about each other and they like to take care of one another. Um, just, you know, with the pandemic, we had, you know, a lot of young professionals lose their jobs and very quickly, we were able to um, put everybody's resume out there to the network and, you know, people were able to find jobs through that way. You know, it's all about who you know. Rhode Island is a small state. So any anytime you can make connections, it's really, it's really great. Um, also, the fact that we give back to the community. I mean, United Way as a whole uh, just put, I believe, like $4.32 million out for grants in for our strategic plan. Um, and all that money that's, you know, donated goes right back out into the community. So as a young leader, you're both making a difference in the community and, you know, networking and growing yourself. Right. And I know that Maria, you yourself are a member of YLC, right? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about membership? So what's the average age range of members? That is a good question. So um, we have about early 20s to late 30s. Probably our cutoff is around 39, um, give or take. It's, um, yeah, it's a good size group, like Jess was saying, and it's been a fun group to be a part of for sure. So, And what is the cost to be a member? There's no cost. Um, we are working with people who are just getting into the field and just starting their careers to people who are more tenured. Um, we do have different giving levels for those folks. We do want to inspire philanthropy for sure. Um, so we do invite people to give to the organization, but we don't want that to be um, to inhibit people from being able to be a part of something that they they do feel really passionately about being involved so that's the that's the nice thing about joining and I know when I first joined that was something I was like oh great <laughs> that's exciting I get to be a part of this and I, I don't have to 
to give at an obscene amount, uh, absurd amount of uh, money. So it's completely free just to be a part of the network. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, and I know that there are three different pillars of membership. There's the, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's the professional development, fundraising, and community engagement. Can you expand a little bit on each of those pillars? Sure, Jess, do you wanna take uh, the professional and fundraising pillar and I'll take the engagement? Sure. And absolutely, do you wanna go first? Uh, sure, so the engagement pillar, when I first signed on to be a part of YLC back in, oh my gosh, uh, June was it June when I'm first like was interviewing with Jess about being a part of it um I remember I had stepped away from um human services and trying to transition into a more permanent role in fundraising and I knew that I wanted to be a part of the community still I still wanted to feed that passion of mine of nonprofit organizations and helping um underprivileged communities and just overall helping the overall state of Rhode Island um, so the engagement pillar is really that. It's giving back to, to the community through your time. Um, it's volunteering for different causes, um, which is the nice thing about YLC is that we don't, we're not very, we're not specific to the cause that we help. Um, so some of the things that we did were, uh, we made no sew fleece blankets for sheltered animals, which is um, Jess's personal favorite. Um, we made, let's see, we did a baking, virtual baking event for first responders, which was a ton of fun. What else did we do? Oh, we helped um, a Dare to Dream ranch, a re re rehabilitation um, ranch for veterans, which was really cool. Um, clean up the ranch for the get ready, get it ready for the fall, for the winter. Um, that was a ton of fun. What else did we do? Uh, we did a gingerbread house making event in during Christmas time and the funds that were um, received as a result of folks participating went back to the community. So that was fun. So it's fun to have like different things like that. Um, we're also working on different engagement opportunities. So meeting different opportunities for our folks to get together and just hang because that's part, that's the other thing. The reason why I joined is I wanted to make friends and a lot of our members that is really important for them, not just growing their professional network, but also growing their social network. They, they want to do life with people. We're all kind of all in the same stage of life and we're all kind of struggling with loans and trying to figure that out, but also trying to have fun. So, uh, we're trying to figure out how to do that. Some of those events. A little bit different in the pandemic world. Um, so we're, we're figuring out how to pivot that so that folks, we're still meeting that need, that social need that folks have. So Jess, do you wanna go? Sure, so the other um, two pillars we have is the fundraising pillar and the professional development pillar. Uh, we believe that these three pillars really make up a well-rounded leader in the community. So for our professional development pillar, we have uh, a series called Learn With Leaders, where we have different leaders throughout the state come and talk to us about uh, you know, their journey and how they got where they're supposed to, where they are right now. We've had uh, Treasurer Seth Magaziner come in and talk to us, we just had Dr. Rainey, uh, the uh, emergency medicine doctor from Brown come and talk to us. Uh, we've had all kinds of people and we really feel like this is what, you know, one of the uh, major parts of YLC is to become, you know, more well-rounded, like I said. Mm -hmm. And the fundraising aspect of it is we hold a fundraiser, uh, a big fundraiser at the, uh, during the spring called the night is young where everybody comes. And usually it's a big party where we have, um, you know, dancing and food and drinks and we raise money for our underprivileged children to go to the summer learning initiative. Um, this year, it's a little bit different. We are actually going to the Mesquamacate drive-in movie theater in Westerly where we're going to do a COVID friendly um, or COVID safe family friendly event um, where we're going to be showing the movie Grease. Uh, so, the, but we're still raising funds for the uh, underprivileged children to go to the uh, summer learning initiative. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. So I just want to, I'm going to kind of rewind and highlight pieces from each of those pillars that you both mentioned, but I just want to make sure we mention this again, because I know it's coming up is you said the annual night is young event at Musquamacate drive-in. What's the date of that this year? It is this Saturday, May 22nd from 7 to 11 p.m. Uh, tickets are $50 for a car of two people. And you get, we have a DJ coming, we have um, cotton candy, we have a magic mirror. And then of course you get to see the movie Grease. Okay. And 
all of those proceeds go directly towards sending underprivileged youth to the United Way of RI's summer learning experience. Right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. So any viewers who are watching this right now, stop whatever you're doing and go buy tickets for this event so you don't miss it because it's coming up this Saturday. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like an incredible event just from what you've just said and everything you've talked about uh, prior to this. So I I'm really excited to see the turnout for that as well. And I wanted to also highlight, um, Maria, when you mentioned the community engagement piece, the volunteer events, those happen on a monthly basis? Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, with the virtual, we've kind of had to shift a little bit because <laughs> Zoom fatigue, that is a very real thing that we're all kind of facing. Yeah. I mean, um, so we, we still seen a good attendance for our virtual events, but we're kind of figuring out, right, what does the post pandemic, so to speak, I mean, the pandemic, it's going to be around for a while, but we're still trying to figure out what does that look like for members, but the events have been so much fun. I know it's virtual and, and we're all kind of very used to virtual, but it, it's been, we've been able to have just really great conversation and just a lot of laughs. Like my personal favorite um, was the uh, cooking, uh, baking for first responders. That was the most fun I've had on a virtual call. Uh, we were just all goofing off because I don't bake. <laughs> So that was the first time I baked cookies from scratch and I was a hot mess <laughs> about it. So we had a great one of our members on our board. She did, a, she moderated the whole process. So, and we had a couple of guys on there baking and it's just, it was funny to have that interaction on there too. Just having these, um, one of our, our vice chair, great human being. He's just, he, you can definitely know his presence in a room and it's funny to, He's a bigger guy too, and he was baking and he was just making, we're making jokes about his experience of baking. It's, it was a lot of fun. So we do have, I know I'm going a little bit off topic here, but I just want to stress how much fun these events are because you really are, you're just hanging out with a bunch of people and you're also doing something really good for the, for the community. It's a feel good experience. So, but they are monthly um, and we're excited to get back into in-person, whatever that in-person events are going to look like moving forward. So yeah, I have a little bit of a long-winded response, but I felt like I needed needed to say that because I needed people to know how much fun these things are. The piece of that too that I I heard from you saying is even though these are virtual and you've had to kind of shift the way these events happen, you're still forcing people outside of their comfort zone, which is exciting as well because <laughs> it, it's all a, a way of kind of uh, growing yourself as well. Yeah. Um, feel good. Feel sure. good way of doing it at that. Also, the professional development pieces, uh, grow as a leader through the Learn with Leaders events. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. um, these happen quarterly, right? So kind of every season or? Yes, we do for a year. For a year, okay. And something really excited that I, exciting that I want viewers to know about these is of, as a member, obviously you'll hear about these firsthand. You'll hear about them and you'll know about them happening but these are open to the public, right? Absolutely. All of our events are hosted by, you know, a YLC in the United Way, but they are open to anybody. Anybody can come join us at the Musquamic Drive-In Movie Theater. Anybody can come to our Learn With Leaders events. Um, they're just hosted by United Way. Mm -hmm. And the best part about being in the network is, I mean, obviously I am not a member and I'm going to say yet because I'm not a member yet, but we don't know what may happen in the future. Um, I had never heard about them or I, I hadn't, you know, if you're in the network, you're in the know more so, and you, you can hear about all the events that are yeah. happening and you can really benefit Absolutely. from all of these professional development events, which I think is really awesome. Also, um, how are these professional development events, the community engagement events, how are they decided? Like what the events look like? It, does the network decide kind of what? community engagement events will happen? That's a great question. Jess, do you, you want to take it or do you want me to take it? You could go and then I'll add to it. Okay. <laughs> um, so the decision is made by the board. Um, the board is made up of 18, 17 yep. um, young adults um, that are part of, also part of the network. So I'm a member of the board. I'm at the chair for the engagement committee. Um, but when, so what we do is as new members are coming in, Justin and I meet with those new members. And one of the things that I like to ask that we both really do like to ask is what are some things that you want to see, um, as a part of your experience with YLC? And so we very much so take into consideration what our members are 
um, wanting. We don't just make decisions like, oh, we want this event. We are, we are really working hard to try to hear the voice of the members of our community um, so that we can plan things more strategically because for one, we want people to show up and two, we want people to have a good time. And by virtue of that, you just, you have to know what the community is saying. So um, that's how we've made our decisions. I don't know if I left anything out, Jess. No, that's great, uh, Maria. I think that, you know, it's really important that when we have new members that come in, um, Maria sends them a survey. So we're doing data collection right now and we're um, trying to figure out, you know, what is the sweet spot for our members. So we really take our members' uh, opinions into consideration. That's great. Now, Maria, as a member, can you tell us a little bit about, I know that you gave some examples of your experience, but can you tell us a little bit more about your experience as a member of YLC? That's a great question. Definitely not the experience I thought it was going to be um, when I first started out uh, with this whole process. Um, it has been virtual for the most part, um, so it's been interesting knowing and getting to know the people on this board who I've never physically seen in person uh, for the most part. A few of them have come to the in-person events, but the majority probably haven't because of just the COVID uh, restriction, just COVID in general. Um, so it's been funny to know, and um, for example, our chair and to know her well enough to say that I call her my friend and I have no idea how tall she is. She told me the other day how tall she was. And I had, <laughs> it's like, oh my God, Jackie, I tower over you. <laughs> so it's been fun to kind of figure that stuff out and just get to know our, our board more specifically. Um, and just, I started with this whole process because I wanted to give back to the community. I am philanthropically and with my time, but I also really wanted to make meaningful relationships. And so I got myself involved in the board um, and I have loved my experience, even though it's been virtual, which is crazy to say that, that I have friends that I've never met in person. So it's kind of like, I feel like I have like these secret pen pals, <laughs> sort of. Um, and so on that part of it, it's been really meaningful to develop these relationships with folks on the board and on the, 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 just the average membership level. I love people. Um, it's part of the reason why I'm fundraising It's part of the reason why I wanted to become an engagement chair for the board is because I love hearing what people are passionate about. And so that has been the most fulfilling part of being a part of it, um, is, hearing about what inspires others and being able to like I can easily be inspired by other people when they talk passionately about things and so to see and to witness all of our members who just really care about the community and want to be involved is just such a rewarding thing to be a part of and just also get to know new people it's been for me I feel like it's been a privilege uh to be able to be like the face of it at the first front of so to speak, kind of like the, if you think of a house, the front door, I'm the front door. <laughs> so people have to open the front door to get into the house. So it's been fun to like, kind of welcome people home almost into that. And, and then just to see their friendly faces kind of pop on. There's a couple of people that I've been able to just kind of keep in contact with through like email. And so that's been really fun, but I am, I am really looking forward to people getting back to being in person because I think that's where the genuine relationships can kind of just blossom. So that's been exciting. I don't know if I answered your question, but I hope I did. You've created a beautiful picture of what it seems like to be a part of this network. And I think that that's exactly what I wanted. And that's exactly what I wanted viewers to be able to see. Yeah. Uh, that was perfect. Yeah. We're still very much so, um, developing it to be a much more meaningful experience, especially with having to shift so much from virtual and now trying to figure out the post, like the pan, the now that the world is really opening up, essentially, we are really trying to figure out what that is. And through conversations with our members, that's what we're taking back. And so Jess kind of talked a little bit about the data collection piece and how important that is, because we want people to be back in person. We want people to have the experience that they signed up for. So that's been also really exciting to be a part of it too, is kind of figure out what does that look like? Um, so building the plan and flying it as we go, so to speak. Great. All right. Now, before we close, I wanna know how do folks who are watching this join? If anyone is interested in joining the network, how would they do it? If anybody wants to join, they can email me at jessica.lachey at unitedwayri.org, or they can find out more information on our website, just going to unitedwayri.org um, and finding out more information that way.
Awesome. And we will share all of that contact information as well below this video. So anybody who's watching knows exactly how they can join. Now, right before we close, I just wanted to open the floor if there's anything either of you would like to add before we end this segment. You can go ahead now. Go ahead, Jess. You look like you were ready to say something. Well, I just want to say thank you, Erica, for having us today. We really, you know, appreciate all of the um, support from the labor community. We can't do it without you, especially at United Way. And we'd hope that some of you, you know, decide to join us and for the next year. And I just want to say, if you're not a member, seriously become a member because we would love to have you be a part of the community and attend our YLC, uh, our YLC event this, this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, who doesn't love the movie Grease? Come on. What is that? Or even if you don't like the movie Grease, a drive-in experience and to give back while you're sitting back in your car, hanging out and just watching a movie. That sounds like a good time. So if you need a date night idea for any of those couples that are watching this, You've got your date night, you're giving it back to the community. So come hang out with us for that event and hopefully we'll see everyone there. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you both so much for being on Labor Vision. Um, I'm so happy to have you both and to learn more about this wonderful opportunity for uh, individuals in Rhode Island. So thank you both so much. Thank, thank you. you. All right, for those of you who are watching from home, you're watching Labor Vision, the at-home edition. I'm your host, Erica Hammond. And if you've missed any of this segment, please check out our website. It is www.laborvisionri.org, and you can watch it there. Thanks so much. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Labor Vision. We appreciate your input and encourage your comments. Labor Vision can be seen on this channel three times each week, Tuesday at 7 p.m., Thursday at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 5 p.m.